please join me in giving Dilawar a hand of applause, the president of Freshdesk. Thank you, Zayn, and thanks, um, Barack, and at home. You know, I have to say that uh, I think I see a lot of friends in the audience. As you know, I spent about five years commuting from San Francisco to Istanbul for your Anja Media, and it's, uh, it's my second home. So I feel very much at home, coming back to at home. So great to have you, great to be here, and thanks for joining me. So I've got a few minutes, and I'm here to uh, share with you the Fresh Desk uh, journey and the Fresh Desk story. But before I go there, I want to just get a sense of uh, who's in the room and how much you guys are familiar with this sector. Um, how many of you are either working um, in a SaaS company or are entrepreneurs uh, in the SaaS world, software as a service, or are looking to get involved in SaaS? Just want to see how many of you are familiar with. So a few. So I know Turkey has a very strong consumer tech, and I was in that world. It has a very strong social. But the world also runs on B2B software, and software is eating the world, and that's where the story is. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about Freshdesk and our model. Um, so, but I understand that there's a lot of folks who probably may not be familiar with uh, the SaaS model as much, so I'll, I'll, I'll pace it accordingly. OK, let me first get this right. I'll just, I'll just use the, I'll use the manual. All right, so let me start with this. Um, we are in an age of social and mobile, and I think that is something all of us are living as consumers. Um, how many of you have ever um, tweeted, and knowing that the Turkish population, I know you have, but how many of you actually tweeted about a poor customer service experience? Raise your hand. About an airline you know, not being on time. Um, and that's a trend we see all over. The, so when you don't like something today about the customer service um, or um, how you're treated by a company or a brand, you express that sentiment publicly. So it used to be that when you call a company and you have a problem with them, you're having a one-to-one -one conversation. But today, the narrative about customer service is a public narrative. It's one to many. And companies' reputation is at stake when, when you're talking about that, um, that state of service. <clears throat> so companies, on the other hand, uh, you know, and I was, by the way, a part manager at Siebel Systems, which was acquired by Oracle back in the day. We used to build software for large companies. Um, and it used to be that big brands worried about service. But what has changed dramatically now, that even if you're a fast growth startup, you're a small, medium business, you worry about the public narrative about yourself as well. Because if you didn't do something right, people are going to write a Yelp review on you. There will be conversation about you in social media and so forth. So companies of all sizes have begun to pay special attention to customer service and their reputation online because of social and mobile, because we are expressing our views wherever we are about anything, and we expect a lot more from brands in this day and age. And finally, let me say this, on, on the business's side, on the user's side, people who use software like sales uh, software or support software, it's almost a new demography of users that have come into the marketplace. Many of these people are digital natives. If you look, I mean, there's a lot of millionaires in the room. If, you're, if your entry-level job is a customer service rep, you have grown up on consumer apps. So you're coming into a workflows, work workforce and you expect that the software that you will use for customer service or, or, or sales ha must have, this, have a similar consumer experience. But I think most of you would agree with me that if you use Salesforce, and if you use SAP, it is by no means a consumer experience. So there's a huge chasm between where the industry is, where your expectations are, both as a consumer, both as a business user, and where the B2B software is when it comes to its design, its experience, and its functionality. And that's where we come in. I like to say that we have a very democratizing mission. And by democratizing mission, what I mean is a mission that is not just focused on a few big companies, but for companies of all sizes. So we are in the business of enabling exceptional 
customer experiences for customer service, for sales, um, for small and medium businesses, for fast growth startups, as well as for enterprises. It's, it's a pretty ambitious mission. And I'm happy to answer questions how you, know, you may think we are able to do this. We, there are four products in the market today. The fourth one we launched today, actually. So it's been a little busy day, so if I'm a little um, you know, uh, incoherent, could be my lack of sleep. So Freshdesk is the main product. It's been around five years, five and a half years. Um, it's for external customer support. Fresh service for internal employee support. Hotline is for in-app mobile engagement, customer service for the mobile first businesses, and Fresh Sales is our CRM software. I'm happy to answer more about this as we move forward. Let me share with you a little bit of, uh, uh, about our journey. I know there are some, uh, a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs in the room, um, so that you may find our story uh, hopefully inspiring. Uh, Fresh, has, uh, I would say, has a, has a quite an inspiring story of global entrepreneurship. We were not founded in Silicon Valley. Uh, I think I've had this international trend now twice in my last two, two jobs. Um, this uh, company was founded in Chennai, India. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the Indian market, uh, Chennai is also not Bangalore. It's not the tech hub. It's a, it's a I would say, a more of a second tier city when it comes to tech talent. It's a, it's a big city, but it, it is not a magnet for tech. However, the company was founded there. Um, and it's incredible. Today, we have, we have grown to more than 80,000 customers worldwide in a short span of five years. So what it proves is that if you're an entrepreneur today and you have a good idea and you execute with passion and can mobilize a good team, you know, things can work out for you pretty nicely. So um, just to give you a sense of uh, growth, uh, we went from uh, 20,000 customers about two years ago to 80,000 uh, today. So it's a four-fold increase over a matter of two years. Uh, there are about 700 employees worldwide. Our headquarters is here in the Bay Area. Uh, large office, a large team, um, development talent in Chennai, India, and then we have offices in Germany, London, and Australia. We're backed by three great investors, uh, Google Capital, uh, Excel, and Tiger Global. Tiger was also my previous investor at Yonja. Uh, we've raised $94 million. The most recent round, round was last, uh, last uh, May. Uh, let me say this, that um, one of our core um, uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, structured advantage we have as a business is that we have a large, you know, team that is in a in a lower cost structure, if you will, and we have access to terrific talent, uh, and we are able to build multiple products. If we were in the valley, all of us were here, uh, there's no way we would have executed at this pace of innovation. So our access to this uh, amazing uh, tech talent. Uh, in Chennai has been one of the main reasons why we are where we are. And secondly, let me also say this, I'm familiar with the passion that I saw in the Turkish market. There is something to be said about while, you know, we we'd certainly enjoy what's happening in the Valley, but there's a degree of passion and energy that you find in emerging markets, which almost, you know, is not at the same level as you find here. So we are benefiting from that, and obviously that's reflected in, in the state of the business. Any questions so far before I move forward about the company, about what we do? Don't be shy. I'll, I'll keep moving forward. So here are some of the names. Uh, I, I mentioned to you we have you know pretty large install base. Um, some of these companies you may be familiar with, uh, but there's a lot of uh, small, medium businesses that we're equally proud of that you may not have heard of. Um, so again, our focus is on the long tail uh, of the global economy, but as well as teams within larger, larger organizations. So you may wonder, so what, is, what is help desk? What is, cust what is fresh test do? And um, this question comes up all the time. So first of all, let me say we are software. We don't have people. So we don't have people to provide service. But it is actually a product that helps you streamline communication between your customers and yourself. So at the heart of the product, there is this ticketing. It allows you to have a conversation and assign the inquiry as comes from the outside to the right person. Uh, it is multi-channel. Inquiry could come from a customer's questions would come from an email, come from chat, come from uh, phone, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, self-service portal, mobile in-app. It's irrelevant. Context matters, channels do not. 
So we made great pains. We've taken great pains to make sure that regardless of where the inquiry is coming from, it all, all comes to nicely in one help desk. Today, a lot of companies, I know even the Turkish market from my previous experience, you will have a separate system for live chat. You'll have a separate system for email communication with your customers. You'll have a separate channel for mobile. And you're literally dealing with four to five screens. But in our case, it all of it comes within one help desk. And you can operate that in a pretty seamless fashion. We've actually gamified our help desk. So if you um, are helping customers faster, you win points, you win badges. So it is to bring that consumer feel, feel to the help desk. Um, and, and there's reporting, self-service, and apps. So I just want to give you a sense of what is, what is in the software. Uh, before I move forward, I, I do want to just share with you, in case you wonder, how do we, uh, what's our business model? So in SaaS, if those of you may not be familiar, this is a subscription model. So we, you pay on a per user basis. For example, if in your company you have 10 customer service representatives, you will pay for 10 folks, and the price range is uh, anywhere from $19 per month, per user, all the way up to $79, depending on what package you're in. For the first three users, it's free. So it's a freemium model. We do want adoption. So you want you, know, want you to try this before you actually uh, get on a, on a, on a, on a, on a payment plan. Um, I, I thought I'd share with you a little bit of a few trends um, as to what we're seeing in the customer service arena in case of the, those are of interest. So first of all, you know, many of you know that you know, phone is still a primary channel. People call, you know, you call Turkish Airlines on a phone, you know, you, you're calling banks on a phone, you know, we're using email. However, there is a fast um, change towards more short form and interactive communication from long form. A lot of companies, even big ones, are going towards live chat, are going towards WhatsApp-like messaging. Uh, and communication between customers. Because, we are, because that's what we're doing in our personal lives. We are starting to expect the same thing. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just have a live chat with guarantee about something that I saw on my, on my bank account within the app? I expect that today as a consumer, whether I'm in Istanbul or whether I'm in San Francisco. And that is where the rise of fresh is coming in. The shift towards long form to short form real time interaction. Number two, smarter community. So the, you know, if you could get help from another customer, you would probably want to get help from them versus getting help from a company. So sometimes the community can help you. So we are, we are enabling communities as well. Um, machines, so machine learning is becoming a major trend in our industry. How many of you followed Facebook's announcement about Messenger actually having bots? Raise your hands, please. Everybody follows, everybody's on Facebook, so you, I'm sure you followed that. Um, that's an example. Facebook is going to have Messenger as a potentially an operating system for the businesses. So Bank of America or 100 Flowers have bots, which will give you basic customer service. We are also looking into providing machine learning driven customer support on our platform. That's a big trend that will probably happen in the next couple of years, if not sooner. And finally, in app mobile support. I cannot emphasize enough. We know that our mobile phones have become our communication with businesses. That's how we're doing business. And the, con the context and the concept of customer service has to be not just on mobile, but has to be within the mobile app. Has everybody used, has, or rather, who has not used Uber? Uh, nobody wants to raise a hand, even if they have not used Uber. That's fine. Have you ever used Uber's customer support? You have. And those of you who have, you may know that up until recently, if you were to um, get help from Uber, there is a page that will show up as a static page. And it will tell you to write your issue within the, app, within the page. And then you'll get an email on your phone. And they will tell you, tell us what's going on. And then you have an email communication. That's a little strange. You would think that a company that is built as a mobile app company, near $100 billion in valuation, the most valuable private company and a mobile app, basically, will have an in-app um, exchange. So what I would expect is if I have an issue with my ride, I should be able to have a messaging within the application. But it wasn't up until a month ago Uber launched that. That's how far we are as an industry. While we, each of us have probably 40 to 50 apps, 
um, on, your, on your devices, you can go take a look at that. Probably not even one of them have in-app in interaction with, your, with that brand. And that's the opportunity we're seeing with in-app mobile support, and we have a new partner on this. So I just want to share that with you. If you're looking to start a business, that's an area to look into. There's a lot of opportunity, a lot of pain there. Um, here's some learning lessons for those of you who may be interested in SaaS as a, as, a, as a business model, but I think this is true for even other industries. You may wonder, wow, you guys have a lot of growth. Uh, you know, how did you get to 80,000 customers? How many salespeople you had, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, the reality is we've used what we call an inside sales go-to-market uh, go uh, strategy. Our customers have discovered us on the web. So there was a time 15 years ago when I was at Siebel or SAP, we would go to customers, we'll make presentations, we'll do outbound stuff, and then we will get interest, and then we'll go sell, we'll, we'll say, okay, here's the software. Now, the customers discovers you. And, you, and, and, you, and they come to your stream, and they've already signed, up, signed you up as a trial. And it's your job to make sure they understand what have they signed up, and then you just close the deal. It's a far cry uh, from even five years ago or 10 years ago, the way software was discovered and adopted. So it's called inside sales. It's called you know, where you actually have to do customer success as opposed to selling. That's how we've scaled. Um, most of our big customers actually came to us via Google Ads. We didn't even go to them. And when they came to us, we had to make sure we took care of them, and if they had any questions about the trial they had, free trial, then it was, it was, uh, the questions were answered. Um, and in order for that to work, you have to make the software very quick and easy to onboard. Because there's nobody to handhold you. You're on your own. So it has to be near consumer experience, just like um, Facebook support doesn't help you to install your Facebook app on your phone. Your business software should not be requiring that help either. It's actually doable. And that's the, the model we um, aspire to. And finally, we've had a very liberal customer support strategy. We actually have people that will help you for any size of the customer, regardless of your size. Because again, if you take care of you during the trial phase, chances are you'll be successful uh, when you actually uh, you know, sign that contract. So with that, let me pause uh, in case there are any questions about the company, the model, SaaS, any opportunities in this space, um, happy to do that. So I don't let anybody ask questions if I don't ask first. Um, so we, we met like three years ago almost, and that was when you were transitioning to come here again. And what are the biggest challenges? And you, you have met lots of Turkish startups when you were in Turkey, and I'm sure you've been contacted by many of them also when you came here. What do you think the fundamental mistakes that Turkish startups do when they want to come here? You've been in Yonca when there was transition to a corporate now, apart from startup. How do you see those changes happen when you want to engage with the startups and the corporates? I'm not sure I fully understood. Are you asking me how, what you said you, what mistakes folks make when they want to come here? And in transition to become a company that's big enough now, that's established, instead of a startup, transitioning to okay. a startup. So just uh, to clarify something, I was always here. I used to go to Istanbul. Uh, I was so committed. You know, I know, I know, I know. I was always based here. I was spending a lot of time in, in Turkey. So I guess the question is, when are you ready to be going to the valley, right? Well, I think it depends on what you're doing. It depends on, first of all, do you have a global product that you're working on? Are you working on a local product? I mean, if you're working on a local product, you don't need to come here. You know, come here, visit, and would love to hang out, but really, you don't need to be here. Um, if you're, we just met uh, Faisan, you know, he's got a company in Pakistan, book me, that is, it's a local traveling site. You know, it needs to be there. You come here for knowledge, but really, you have to be there. But if you have, a, if you have global ambitions, I still think, and maybe I'm in a minority here, I still think you don't have to come here right away. Actually, Fresh Task is an example of that. As president, I came in almost three years ago, two years after the company had been founded. We had already raised some money. We had already gotten 5,000 5, customers or so. So we had already had traction. It was already global. I came to scale it. I, I think there is a, sometimes an, um, a little bit misplaced allure of the valley, that somehow you, you need to come here to prove your product market fit. No, your product market fit can be proven while you're in Ankara. You don't have to be here for that. 
In fact, if anything, this place can be very distracting. It's very expensive. It's just, it's just too diffused. Uh, so it's good to get exposure, but there is no reason if you can find talent that can build a global product that is solving global need, that you cannot do that from within Turkey. You can come here to get some additional talent to help scale. It's good to have a you know, global presence, but we'd love to see uh, you know, a SaaS global powerhouse from Turkey. And it's doable, it's happening. Uh, Freshness is one example, so is uh, Atlassian, that many of you may know recently went public. They were founded in, in Australia, they weren't founded in the Valley. They came here a bit later. Zero is another example, accounting company, SaaS company, was founded in, in Australia again. So there are examples of this, and I think what I'll tell you why you, you may want to believe me on this, because of cloud, because of the online acquisition channel of Google, you can launch the product, you can get customers pretty much from anywhere on planet. In fact, in fact, if anything, I actually feel you have probably better chance of getting some talent at a, at a cheaper rate in Turkey than you have it here. Here, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare to even sometimes hire salespeople. Um, and frankly, what you get for your money is probably not as much as you will get in other places. And I'm saying this with all due respect <laughs> to my team. Um, so, so my answer is, you have to have a proven product market fit that would be one thing I would just say pretty safely before you come here because it's a big change, it's a big investment of time and effort. And here, you come here to perhaps scale, but not to figure out whether or not this is gonna work. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Give me another applause. I got the answer I wanted, not from my messy question, because I am going to now introduce you to someone that I met two years ago. Um, so, th there are always issues between countries. Policy is policy, politics is politics. When I was invited to go to Armenia as a Turkish citizen, I had my doubts. Not that I have any political alignment, but I was honored, but I was at the same time rethinking it. So were the other delegation. But when we went there, we met great teams, great hospitality. We met good friends. And I was blown away. Yes, I know I have to stop talking. I was blown away to know that there is a company called Pixart in a wonderful place that had became the number one application in Android on photo editing. And then the scaling part, we asked, now what's next? That was confidential then, but now it's official. They have got their funding round from US and they're, they're based partly here, the engineering teams in Armenia. So allow me to introduce you to Hovan Nesavoyan, the founder of Pixar, to tell his story. And thank you, Dilawar, it's always nice seeing you again. <laughs>